Hello and welcome to this guide on how to get into orbit in Kerbal Space Program 2. This is the second video on this subject I am doing. Um, the reason for that is largely because the first video I did was only the second video I ever made. So it was a bit rough around the edges and it uh, also wasn't the most efficient way to get into orbit. So I'm going to try and show you a couple of extra techniques which will hopefully allow you to get into orbit while using less fuel. Now, the rocket you can see on screen is a Saturn V, which we built in the How to Build a Saturn V video. But I've added a few extra bits to it because we're going to try and get this to Juna. So, as you can see, the main things we've added are four rockets, solid rocket boosters around the first stage. And on the service module, we have also added some solar panels, along with a couple of solar panels and some parachutes onto the lander as well. Now, before we even launch, there is one key thing that we need to do if we're trying to get to Juna. If you're just trying to launch into orbit, then this bit isn't necessary. However, what we are going to do is we're going to go to the Kerbal Space Center. And once there, we're going to go straight to the tracking station. And the reason for this is because we want to get to Kerbin and Juna positioned correctly. So what we're going to do is we're going to focus on Kerbal. And then, what we want to do is, if we place Duna at the top of the screen, so we're going to imagine this is a clock, so if Duna is at 12 o'clock, we want to get Kerbin at around 1 o'clock, so somewhere in that region there. So, we're going to fast forward time a little bit, and then once they have lined up, we're going to establish whether that is 1 o'clock. So if we go 12 o'clock, 3 o'clock, that looks roughly around 1 o'clock. We could probably go a little bit further. We don't want to go too far because then we would have to do the entire rotation again and it can take several in-game years to actually get to the point that we want to. But that looks about right to me. And the main reason we're doing this is because it means that Kerbin, or when we leave Kerbin's sphere of influence, we will get a nice transfer orbit straight into Juno's atmosphere. Or Juno's sphere of influence, even. So now that's done, we're going to get straight back into the launch. Right, so now we're here, we'll get straight into the launch. And as usual, as soon as we've taken off, we're going to hit the up button on the SAS control wheel. And then we are going to roll the rocket so the red north line is pointed to the left of the nav ball. Um, this is just a matter of personal preference. Personally, I prefer to pitch down range using W rather than yaw down range. But we are heading for a 90 degree heading. So that's this line here. And once we have hit 100, 100 meters per second, we're going to start pitching our rocket. Now, in the last tutorial, I said to pitch at 2,500 meters. Either way, it works fine. Personally, I would recommend trying several different styles of launch for your launches just to see which works best for the rocket you are trying to get into orbit. Anyway, now we have hit 100 meters per second we're going to start pitching forwards and um, the general principle here is the same as in my other tutorial where we want to try and keep the level indicator inside of the green prograde marker and the reason for this is when it's inside of the prograde marker the air is running down the rocket whereas if we go outside the prograde marker it would start running across the rocket and that will create more drag and it will also risk flipping the rocket over, which we do not want happening. So we're going to keep pitching down steadily until we hit the 45 degree line, which is this thin black line on the middle of the nav ball. And once we hit 45 degrees pitch, we're going to stop pitching and we're going to stay there until our apoapsis reaches 70,000 meters. So we're actually aiming for a total apoapsis of around 100,000 meters on this launch. But once our apoapsis reaches 70,000, we are then going to pitch down to 10 degrees on the horizon to extend our orbit. So 
So now we've reached 70,000 meters, as I said, we're going to pitch down to 10 degrees. Now this rocket um, will actually run out around about um, 100,000 meters in altitude. However, if you aren't using this rocket or your rocket still has fuel, I would recommend just cutting your fuel, uh, your throttle, and then uh, we'll be able to use that fuel in the next part of the launch. So as you can see, our engines have cut and we are at 101,000 meters apoapsis. So we'll ditch that stage. And then we're going to go to the map, we'll right click on Kerbin and hit the focus button and we want to create our initial parking orbit manoeuvre. So first of all we're going to click uh, near the apoapsis and create a manoeuvre. It's always best to go a little bit before rather than after just in case. Um, and then if we click near the manoeuvre node we can pull out on the prograde arrow until our periapsis appears. What we're going to try and do is we're going to try and get our periapsis and apoapsis to around about 90 degrees from the manoeuvre node. So now, if we pull inwards on the retrograde arrow, that will actually give us a bit more control over our adjustments. So as we can see, our projected apoapsis is 115 kilometres and our projected periapsis is 87 kilometres. So to get that circularised, we're going to pull out on the radial out arrow until the apoapsis marker is back inside of the manoeuvre node. And then, once that is done, we're going to then just pull in ever so slightly on the retrograde arrow until our markers get to 90 degrees again. As you can see, our projected orbit is now 101 by 101 kilometres. Now, the um, manoeuvre planner isn't 100% accurate, so we're not going to actually achieve that exact orbit, but once we have gotten into our initial parking orbit, we can then create another manoeuvre to circularise our orbit. And what we then need to do, and we need to do this as soon as possible, is we need to hit the manoeuvre button on the SAS control bar, and the reason for that is, particularly with this rocket, it's quite heavy, so as you can see, it's taking a little while to get down to the marker on the nav ball and that's only going to leave us with about 50 or 40 seconds left over so we're going to manually warp forward by a couple of notches if you've got more than a minute you can hit the warp to maneuver button uh, but generally i like to try and aim for around about 10 seconds just to give us a little bit of time just to make sure we're all set to perform the burn Then once the timer reaches zero seconds, we're going to activate the next set of engines. So I usually like to watch the burn staging timeline, or the burn gauge as I normally call it, on the burn timer. Uh, you can also watch the time on the um, stop burn section as well. Uh, normally if you start your burn bang on zero seconds then these two should line up perfectly but sometimes if you don't get the burn start just right then the time won't actually line up so I usually just watch the staging timeline. The other way to judge how your orbit is doing as well is just to keep an eye on the periapsis on your orbital info panel. So once the timer has fully emptied, we're going to hit X on our keyboard to cut the throttle. Now you can see our actual orbit is 102 uh, by 94 kilometers. So to circularize that, we're just going to um, quick, well, first of all, I have actually set up um, a action group on this rocket. So that if I press five, then the four outer engines on this stage will actually cut off and we're only using the first, uh, the centre engine. And I do that just because it means we've got a little bit more control over our burns and we're not going to risk overdoing it. So we'll create the manoeuvre node. We will pull out ever so slightly on the, oh sorry, in ever so slightly on the retrograde arrow. And then we're just going to try and get, once again, our periapsis and apoapsis to around about 
90 degrees and as you can see because it's such a small maneuver it is a bit fin fiddly trying to get it to work but we should get there eventually and we've got plenty of time to keep playing if you're having that trouble it might be worth zooming in a little bit as well though i don't know if that makes much of a difference as you can see we're just about there so i think that should do the trick yeah we're going to leave it at that and that means our projected apoapsis is 102 and our projected periapsis is also 102 so that should give us a nice circular orbit once again we're going to hit the maneuver button on the SAS control bar and once that has got into position we're going to warp forwards and we will perform the maneuver you can use RCS to do these maneuvers but prefer, personally I prefer not to uh, because using RCS particularly when um, it's particularly well using RCS basically can shift our apoapsis and periapsis and it can basically mess up the maneuver so I usually use the reaction wheels for this So as I say, once it's settled, we will warp to the manoeuvre. And it's only it's one second burn is this one. So we are going to use partial throttle. But as we're only using the one engine, it shouldn't overburn and we uh, should be able to get it nice and accurately. So once again, now we're here, we'll warp forwards a little bit to get to 10 seconds. And once the time has run out, we will go to partial throttle. And now that that manoeuvre is done, you can see we have a 102.2 by a 102.3 orbit. So the only other thing you might want to do is you might want to check your inclination. So to check your inclination, we'll have a look around and try and find the moon. If you right click on the moon and then hit set target, we can see our inclination is currently at 0 0.5 degrees. So the only other thing we'll need to do to make sure we're in a perfect equatorial orbit is we'll create another maneuver. And because we're approaching the ascending node, I know that we would need to pull outwards on the anti-normal arrow because AN basically signifies anti-normal in this scenario. However, as with everything on the maneuver node, you can actually pull inwards on the normal arrow as well. So we're going to do that until our, and until our um, inclination reaches zero. So there we are. We can go for 90 degrees, but it's not really worth it in this scenario so once again we'll hit the maneuver button and once that's done we will have a perfectly equatorial orbit with a apoapsis of around 102 and a periapsis of around 102 as well so that's all you really need to know when it comes to getting into orbit as i say there are several different ways you can try um but it depends on the rocket you are launching. It's worth trying multiple different launches every time you do a launch. Do a few tests before you actually do the final launch. And uh, yeah, hopefully this video was informative and gave you a few ideas um, on how to get into orbit in a more efficient manner. And if you did enjoy this video, uh, we are going to be taking this rocket, as I said earlier on, to Duna. So... That will be in the next video and hopefully you learned something new from this video and if you did please feel free to like and subscribe and uh, hopefully I will see you in the next one.